Janari Dosar is in the top 40 in the nation in scoring. We take you on his journey to UTPA. UTPA basketball coaches are grooming the next generation of head coaches. We show you how. And if you were at Saturday's women's basketball game, you enjoyed a raucous crowd. We get to know some of the folks leading the UTPA pep band. This is Brown Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronc Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. Each of the University of Texas Pan American basketball teams had a date with first place New Mexico State this past week, and the men had to face those three-time defending WAC tournament champs on the road. Opening minutes, Bronx down 2-0 when Elijah Watson ties the game. And then it becomes the Janari Josar Show. Bronx trailing by one. Did I say trailing? I meant leading by one. Make it three. A few minutes later, game tied at six when Josar hits another jumper. But that's the last time they led as the Aggies come back to win 53-48. The Bronx actually trailed by as many as 16 before pulling within two in the final minutes. Josar led all scorers with 23 points on 10 of 14 shooting. Shaq Boga had 14 of his 16 points in the second half. Those 12 rebounds for Shaq Hines, new career high. Well, we dug ourselves a hole. We didn't play real well offensively the first half, and then the uh, second half uh, came out and made some miscues again and allowed them out to a 15 or 16 point lead. Then we went on about a 18 to four run and brought it back to two and had uh, a possession to tie it, had a good look at the basket and an offensive rebound, didn't convert to tie it. Came down the next possession, down two, and had a pretty good look at a three. Uh, maybe a little rushed, but uh, had opportunities. Here's a look at the WAC standings. Bronx a game up on Chicago State, which stunned Grand Canyon with a buzzer beater Saturday. The Bronx visit the Cougars on Saturday after facing Kansas City on Thursday. Well, it'll be difficult. You know, UMKC just beat Utah Valley. Uh, they got one of the best guards in the league, the Harrison kid. They're very quick. Uh, they shoot the ball, uh, shot it really well at Utah Valley, so they're playing with confidence right now. And in Chicago State, a uh, team that came in here and boxed them one Gennari the whole game uh, has been struggling and went in one at Grand Canyon the other night. So uh, it all comes down to each and every night playing well and your personnel doing their job and trying to limit what the other team's doing because uh, it's, it's a head-in-head -head league uh, other than New Mexico State. They're, they're very, very strong. But everybody else, I think, can, can get anybody on a given night if you play well. Gennari Josar has been a big reason for the Bronx success all season long. After scoring 23 points on Saturday, Joe Sar has not only increased his lead in the race for the WAC scoring title, he has continued to move himself up among the top 40 in the NCAA in scoring. But he's more than just a scoring machine. Joe Sar has also traversed the globe, in part because he wants to follow his dream of playing basketball. Romeo Villarreal has the story. In his first season with the Bronx, Janari Josar has already established himself as a major player on the team, leading the team this season in points per game, rebounds, and free throws made. Watching Janari play it would seem him playing basketball was always a natural fit, but the star from Estonia tried many other sports before finally deciding to pursue a career in basketball. I tried all kinds of different, uh, different sports. My dad was a volleyball player and he wanted me to play volleyball. Like he didn't really want me to, but he, you know, put me in a practice. I didn't like it as much, but I was good at it though. Um, I played soccer and, uh, well, I just didn't like the other sports as much as, you know, basketball because I watched the NBA. Uh, and uh, I think it was in the second grade when I went to basketball practice and I, I stuck with it. It became apparent really early on that Josar was a special talent, making his nation's under-18 national team at the age of 16, which led to him being scouted by many U.S. colleges. I played for my national team, and, and one of the um, coaches from Ole Miss 
uh, was there uh, where there was a tournament back home and he came to uh, me after the game and I gave my uh, uh, coaches uh, contacts and uh, so he contacted contact me uh, uh, afterwards and my coach and and so my basically uh, my coach and and the uh, assistant coach in Ole Miss uh, talks a lot and so they figured that I should I should come to the states and go go to high school for a couple uh, years and then go to college. My mom was sad because I was leaving, but my dad I mean they they both like were happy for me, so I didn't like try to you know stop me for from going. After only playing 15 minutes because of a difference in his play style and the play style of his team at Old Miss, and with the assistant coach that recruited him leaving Old Miss for a job in South Florida, Gennari decided it was time for a change, which landed him right here at UTPA. The assistant coach from Old Miss who recruited me, uh, he actually left, and uh, since I didn't get much playing time, I was thinking about you know leaving too because. Um, my coach wasn't there anymore, and and I wasn't sure about the playing time, and and so I asked my coach if he can you know, find find me another uh, school, and he gave me a couple of choices, and well, I chose this one. Good friend of mine, Sergio Rocco, was an assistant at Mississippi, and he was leaving Mississippi, and JJ wanted to leave Mississippi, and. Sergio knew the way we played with motion, a lot of movement and cutting, that, that J.J. would be really good in that. And uh, yeah, so we got with him and got with J.J.'s uh, friend Tomas over in Estonia and got it worked out and happy to have him here. And, and uh, he's a great contributor and he is a great fit for the way we play. After arriving here in the spring and going through a few practices, Gennari felt much more in tune with the motion offense run at UTPA. When, when I got here, uh, we started practicing right away. And uh, I mean, it was, it was tough at first, but his playing, playing style is like, you know, kind of my style. So uh, I think I, I fit in here and, and uh, you know, I think it's a good place. Uh, Gennari's a... Uh... Uh, especially as a head coach, you know, with where I've been and what I've done, is as good a player as I've had. He's got to shore things up on the defensive end, but he is a really uh, good offensive player. And, uh, you know, right now, if he has one negative stat, it's his turnover rate. He's a, he's a good passer. Uh, he does a good job, just turns it over a little bit, but excellent outside shooter, good finisher around the rim, good offensive rebounder. And uh, just a sophomore, you know, he's got a lot to learn, too. Sometimes, you know, I expect even more out of him, but he's just a young kid. So once he becomes a little more complete on the defensive end, he, he'll be a pretty special player. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Viedia. The UTPA basketball coaches are always focused on preparing their student athletes for excellence in life. But what about their assistant coaches? Next on Bronx Country, we see how the UTPA Basketball Brain Trust is imparting their knowledge on the next generation of head coaches. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at UTPABronx.com. We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. The University of Texas Pan American women's basketball team has found itself in the middle of a tight race for the WAC championship. And this past weekend, they faced off against first place New Mexico State. Pick it up eight minutes in. Bronx down six when Hilder Bjorg Karchin's daughter connects. 
And then after a pair of Chazé Wright free throws, it's Tonisha Walker for three. The Bronx have a 21-20 lead. A few minutes later, the Aggies are up seven when Shante Goff launches from downtown. Next time down the court, Goff from inside the arc. Bronx within two. Less than a minute left in the half. Raquel Preston at the line. She hits them both. Game tied at 32. 13 minutes left in the game. The Bronx find themselves down 10, but Brittany Bush puts the Bronx on the comeback trail. And then she gets the hoop with the harm. Bush converts the three-point play. Bronx within six. About a minute later, Bronx still down six when Karchenstadter buries the three. It's 58-55. Now it's 68-65 when Preston steps to the line and hits a pair. Bronx within one. Just over a minute to go. Bronx again down three when Goff hits two free throws. That's as close as they got. Bronx fall, 74-71. First double-double of the season and seventh of her career for Brittany Bush. Ties her career high in scoring while grabbing a season high in rebounds. Karchin's daughter tied her career high in scoring as well. We don't, especially at home, like we don't, it doesn't matter if we're down the whole game or whatever, we don't give in and you know, like I said earlier, we had a couple key uh, possessions, a couple key things to do on defense, and we just didn't get it done. But, you know, we're not going to do a lot, and we're going to move forward. And uh, I think it came it came down to a lot more than the, the last shot. You know, we left a couple people open. They made some some wide open threes that they, they, they shouldn't have been open. But, you know, all we do is get better, uh, focus on the next two, I believe, two home games we got going on. Brittany had uh, her first double-double of the season. Uh, one of the biggest things she did, she stayed out of foul trouble and uh, she finished at the rim and had uh, really good anticipation on rebounds. So, yeah, it was, a, it was a very, very good performance for her. You know, when you can uh, come in and score 18 points and grab 14 rebounds, you've had a pretty good game. Here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx tied for second place with Bakersfield and a game up on both Seattle and Grand Canyon. The Bronx stay at home this week, hosting Kansas City on Thursday and Chicago State on Saturday. UMKC is going to come in. They're going to run a 2-3 zone. They're going to try to run some man. They're very patient. They have very good shooters. They're very good from the free throw line. We're going to have to uh, <coughs> play extremely hard if we want to come away with a win. And then um, Saturday we play Chicago State, and you know that's a big one of our big rivals. We had a good game up there. We beat them by 15 there. So we're going to catch them on the back end of a two-game road trip, so that always helps when they got to travel all the way from Las Cruces to get down here. Bronx basketball head coaches Dan Hipsher and Larry Tidwell are doing more than coaching student-athletes. They're molding a new generation of head coaches. For Coach Hipsher, it's simply been a fact of life throughout his coaching career. That's what the head coach does. For Coach Tidwell, that hasn't always been the case, but now he's taking advantage of his position to pay it forward. As a head coach, my responsibilities, of course, include my players, but they also include my assistant coaches who I want to make my top priority besides my players. And by making them a top priority, I want to get them to be able to coach on the floor, to be able to handle scouting reports, handle recruiting, and that's how you build them into head coaches. Coach Tidwell has allowed three of his assistants to gain all sorts of experience from running practices to conducting interviews, all in an effort to give them the necessary experience to become successful head coaches. Well, I think any time you can get hands-on experience, it's a great thing to have. You know, he does, he gives us a, a chance to, you know, do a lot of things, you know, even outside of practice, inside of practice. Uh, you know, he does that to, to see, uh, to help uh, groom us and help, uh, you know, us become head coaches. And anytime you get a chance to do that and get true hands-on experience, I mean, it's just, it's just huge. It allows me to get preparation and also build my IQ of the sport itself. And it also allows me the freedom to be able to groom and to grow both as, not just as a coach, but also as a mentor. The women's basketball staff isn't alone in its drive to create the next generation of head coaches. In fact, Coach Hipsher has already seen several of his assistants become successful head coaches by allowing them to take on additional responsibilities. I had four Division I head coaches as of a, a year ago. The list of coaches that have cut their teeth under Coach Hipsher is an impressive one, as it includes Alabama coach Anthony Grant, 
VCU coach Jaka Smart, and Akron coach Keith Dumbrot. You know, hey, I, I can't take a lot of credit to, uh, other than hiring good people and giving them an opportunity to grow a little bit. Those two guys uh, have special qualities about him and have, have exhibited that since they've left. So really excited for them and happy for them, but uh, proud to be a part of the process. While the coaches are worrying about the games, the UTPA pep band provides the soundtrack. This group of rambunctious students leads a lot of the cheering and jeering from the student section. And they can play a pretty mean tune as well. Vanessa Mares has more. They're the biggest fans who don't miss a beat. Meet the UTPA pep band, who can best be described as the Bronx six man. It's great to see um, how, how much we can help our team and uh, help the other team lose, and it's, uh, it's great, it's a lot of fun. Josh Butler, a student athlete, says the pep band can really get fans <laughs> to their feet. When playing, you know, if we're down a little bit and you hear the band, I mean, it kind of pumps us up when you hear the band, because when the band goes, the fans get more excited, then everyone else in the team starts to get motivated, and it really adds to the home court advantage. The pep band sits behind the student section and helps out in every aspect of the game. I, I think uh, we add uh, energy to the to the to the uh, game via music, via uh, cheering, uh, cheering our our, our team. Um, we try to mess around mentally with the opposing team, e either through uh, innocent taunting uh, and and uh, stuff like that. Every home game, the UTPA pet band will be sitting right here, and opposing teams will just have to face the music. Reporting from the Fieldhouse for Bronx Country, I'm Vanessa Mattis. The UTPA women's tennis team back on the court this week. Coming up on Bronx Country, highlights from the Bronx match against Texas A&M Kingsville. The UTPA women's tennis team is off to a strong start this season despite contending with a schedule that has them on the road for eight out of nine matches. The Bronx won their first two on the road before getting swept at number six Baylor. The Bronx are back on the road this weekend against UT Arlington and UTSA. The Bronx were supposed to visit Texas A&M Corpus Christi on Tuesday, but rain got in the way. In the middle of it all though, the Bronx played under the blue skies at the Orville Cox Tennis Center. Bronx facing Texas A&M Kingsville, Let's take a look at doubles, and it all started on court three. Katya Stavrilaki and Natasha Mink with the 6-4 win. Then, at number two, Christelle Amsalam and Lison Le Biamont clinch the point. A 6-4 win of their own. Over at number one, Dominique Esparza and Mariana Ronsauer add a win for good measure. They take it 7-6, 7-1 in the tiebreak. Bronx up 1-0. On to singles. And Amsalam gets the Bronx off to a good start. Makes quick work of Tabata Lua, 6-2, 6-2. Bronx up to love. Now it's 2-1 when Stavrilaki takes care of business. A 6-4, 7-5 win at number two. After a loss at number four, the Bronx are still one point away from victory and Le Biamont delivers. Comes up with a 6-4, 7-5 win at number five. Bronx win, four to three. Well, this was a match that we were looking forward to, and I think that we sort of went into it, I guess, expecting a little bit of success. Um, they played great at Baylor, so I, they still needed to remember that match. And so for them to come back today and sort of um, get us going for our upcoming mm -hmm. match against Corpus, it was really important for us to come out on top today. The UTPA men's tennis team was scheduled to visit 15th-ranked Texas A&M on Sunday, but Mother Nature intervened causing the match to be postponed. That gave the Bronx some extra time to prepare for their upcoming matches as they'll host Monterey Tech on Friday and Incarnate Word on Sunday. It's great to have home matches, you know? So, uh, yeah, we'll get, we had our first one, the, the home opener, so that was, it was competitive. We had a good crowd, it was great energy. So um, the boys always enjoy playing at home. So uh, I'd like to put on a little show. So it's gonna be nice to host Monterey Tech on Friday, first time we've had them up here 
um, since I've been here uh, in year two. So uh, hopefully it'll be a nice little thing that we can keep going, a nice rivalry, uh, get everybody some good competitive match. Like they're, they're one of the best teams, if not the best team uh, in Mexico. So it's, it'll be a good good competition for us, a good test. And then uh, on Sunday, we got Incarnate Word. Uh, we played them twice last year in the regular season. You know, they're not in our conference, but we played them twice. And uh, they were close battles uh, the whole way. Uh, every court, singles and doubles. So we know what we expect. We saw them again in the fall. The guys know one another. The coaches get along well. Um, so it'll be a spirited rivalry. And, you know, again, those in-state those in-state matches are important for us for recruiting. UTPA track and field at the Masked Rider Open at Texas Tech. And Robin Gayoso continues to have a strong start to her final campaign, coming in second in the 1,000-meter run. She then turned around and came in seventh in the 3,000 meters the next day, while finishing 11th in the mile. Talk about a busy weekend. Jennifer Zapata led the way in the mile, coming in sixth. The Bronx performed well in the weight throw as well, with Erica Anderson taking third on the women's side, while Trey Taylor and Javier Cartero finished third and fourth respectively on the men's side. You know, the second competition out, first weekend, you know, we're competing, we're taking off the rust from the winter break, uh, just kind of seeing where we are. Then you know, we get back to work, we work for two weeks. Uh, and then go out and compete again. It, it was a work weekend pretty much all around. Um, wasn't so much about just getting marks, but actually working through the meet um, and, and getting some things accomplished. In that regard, I think it was very productive. We got some very good work done um, You know, for all the event groups. Throwers had a good uh, turnout there. Um, and on the track, we had a lot of running gun done. UTPA Women's Soccer is set to host a pair of spring break camps March 9th through the 11th at the UTPA Soccer and Track and Field Complex and March 16th through the 18th at the Harlingen Soccer Complex. The camps run in the mornings and are for girls ages 6 through 13. Space is limited and registration will be on a first come, first serve basis. For more information or to register, visit utpabronx.com. Want to help prepare our student athletes for excellence in life? Then join the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the proceeds go directly to student-athlete scholarships, so visit BronkAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student-athletes. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at utpabronx.com. We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Women's basketball continues the homestand with Kansas City and Chicago State while the men hit the road to face the same two teams. UTPA men's tennis back home for a pair, taking on Monterey Tech on Friday and Incarnate Word on Sunday. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then... Go It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion 
at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at UTPABronx.com. We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century.